the humble jerry can. Have you heard of it? If you haven't, this is what it looks like. It's used to transport fuel and other liquids. Now, what's so special about it, and why do we care about this one? Well, let's start with the name. First of all, jerry can. Where does it come from? Jerry comes from German. Back in World War II, the Germans were referred to as the Jerrys, hence jerry can. So why do we care about jerry cans? Well, in World War II, the United States exported more tons of petroleum products than any other war material combined. So this meant they didn't want anything to be spilled or wasted. So how do you transport that with ease? So let's jump across to the British cans that were available at the time. So you had the two gallon can made of pressed steel and the four gallon can. So the two gallon can, it was strong but expensive. The four gallon can, well, it was abundant and inexpensive, but it had a tendency to leak after minor damage. So these were packed in pairs inside of wooden cases, protected by wooden framing. Over time, this wooden framing was replaced with plywood and cardboard cases, neither of which provided very much protection. While they were getting transported inside of these plywood and cardboard cases, they would often leak and cause the ships to catch fire, and in one such case, the ship actually exploded. So what do they look like? They were kind of cube-shaped, flat top, flat sides, and they had the nozzle off to the side and a little handle in the top middle. And so some other problems with this design were that when you were pouring it, you would have a very wide pour and you would require a funnel to get it into anything without spilling fuel everywhere. So what are the innovations of our German can, the Jerry can? Well, first off, design innovation number one. It was flat sided and rectangular in shape. And you can see that here, you could stack them on their side vertically, or you could line them up inside of ships or lorries making them very easy to transport. Up next, it had three handles. This meant one person could carry two full cans or four empty. Now, how does this work? If you grab the middle handle, you can grab one in each hand. If you grab the outside handle, you can share it with someone else. Or, if you grab two, each with their outside handles, you can hold two with one hand and then two in the other. That's four, probably empty because they get a bit heavy. Up next, it had an air pocket in the top that allowed it to float if it was dropped into water overboard from a plane or a boat. And so how did this work? Well, it was very simple. The nozzle was placed a little below the very top of the can. This meant that while filling it, you would have to leave the little air pocket in the top, otherwise fuel would spill back out of the nozzle. Up next, we have a cam lever release mechanism and a short spout secured with a snap enclosure and an air pipe to the air pocket, which allowed for smooth pouring. And so you can see that here. So you've got your safety pin and your cam lever, prevents you from accidentally knocking the lid off. You've got your air pipe that goes inside and up into the air pocket, allows for smooth pouring. And you have your attachable nozzle for easily pouring into tight spaces. Up next, the sides of the can were marked with a cross-like indentation that not only strengthened the can, but they also allowed the contents to expand. Now fuel expands when it gets hot. And what this would mean with the old cans is that fuel would start to leak out of them, creating a hazard. With this can, the size was strengthened with a cross that meant that the can itself could expand without leaking any fuel anywhere. This also acted in much the same way that corrugation in corrugated cardboard works in that it strengthens the sides of the can, allowing it to be easily stacked without any trouble whatsoever. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment, give it a like, and consider subscribing. 